So we're going to uh, work on section 1.2.1, creating Hillshed. On the documentation, there's a Hillshed documentation. You can run, say, GDAL dem Hillshed, input dem, and output file Hillshed. There are different ways to create Hillshed. This is, again, a very subjective matter, because how do you take a terrain and create a map that humans can interpret? That is something that many people have tried to do it accurately. There are different algorithms for doing this. GDAL supports these two different algorithms. You can also specify whether your how you want to light your region. So you have an elevation data and you want to create a hill shade with the sun being at a specific angle and a height. And that will determine how your terrain looks. So there are some default values that will be used, but you can change that. One thing that's given here as a warning is many elevation data sets, they are kind of unique in how they are they used with the projection. So let's open up this data here. So I have this merge.tiff and this elevation data, you can see my, the projection of this data is 4326. So the horizontal values are in latitude longitude. Each pixel coordinates are latitude and longitude. If I inspect this, the height is in meters. So I have two different units. For horizontal measurements, I'm using degrees. For vertical measurement, I'm using meters. And this is very common for elevation data set. The horizontal units will be in degrees, vertical might be in feet or meters. And this creates a problem when you are trying to compute what is the slope of each pixel and you want to create a hill shade map. So if, you're, if you have data that it looks like this, where the horizontal and vertical units are different, you need to specify this additional value of scale. So what's the ratio of the vertical units to horizontal units? And there's some value here. So one degree equals this many meters. So you specify this. If your vertical units is in meters, your horizontal units are in degrees. If your vertical units are in feet, you specify this value as a scale. And that will allow you to generate the correct values. So let's go and run this command. So we come to the SRTM folder and run this. This is GDAL dem hillshade. So we will run this tool in the hillshade mode. The input is the merge.tiff. We want to create output as hillshade.tiff. And since our horizontal and vertical units are different, we specify the scale value, which is the ratio of degrees to meters. So one degree is equal to this many meters. So we run this. So we create this and let's check what we got. So I'm going to run GDAL info on hillshade.tiff. You can see this is a regular GeoTIFF file, but if you notice the data type is byte. So it creates this eight bit raster. The values do not really mean anything. When you create this hillshade, it's more of a visual representation of the terrain. So we had the 16 bit values with elevation. Once you create a hillshade, it's just like a map. So let's see what this map looks like. I'm going to open QGIS and we gave this as an input. The output that we got looks like this. So this is the hillshade that was created using GDAL. Let's zoom in a little bit and you can see this is what is created. So if our original elevation values were like this, that means each pixel represents the value of elevation of this pixel. If you want to, if you're flying over this region you, from a plane, you will see something like this. This is how humans would interpret this terrain. Here, you can see the light is coming from top left. So you can see the sun is shining from here and you were rendered your data as if it would appear to us and if the sun was here. Okay, so this is kind of the default hill shade algorithm that comes up. Looks pretty decent. And what you would use this for is a base map. So if you're creating a map, you need to represent terrain. This is, would be a much nicer way to say it. this is what the terrain looks like. Try this out. Try running this command with the hill shade option here. And you can see the results. If your horizontal units are in a projected CRS, if your DM was in a, say, UTM projection, you will not specify scale value because your horizontal units are meters, verticals are also in meters. So then you can skip the scale parameters. And so we could create a hill shade. Let's see what are the other options available. Can we improve this or can we make it a little bit better? There are a few other options here. You can see azimuth. So where is the light coming from? So the default is 315, which is from the top left direction. You can change the lighting direction to say, I want to create a hill shade as if the sun was in a different angle. 315 is a good default because with a lot of testing, people have found that humans can interpret terrain much better if you use this as a source of light. Otherwise, sometimes the terrain appears inverted to human eyes. It would feel like the, the edges are valleys and so on. So this is a good default, but there's a better improvement to this. There is an option called multi-directional. 
So you can say, I will render this using a light that is coming from all four directions. And that'll give me a slightly better view of the terrain. So we can give this option multi-direction and we'll get a, a different rendering of the same data. There are also different modes. There's a combined shading, which is, you know, there are two different ways of shading this terrain. One is a slope and oblique. The combined one will combine both of this. So let's try this options and see if we can see the improvement of that. So we're going to go back to this command here and we're going to add those options to our data. So we'll do up arrow key and we keep the same command. Let's add some other options. I'm going to add the multi-directional. And I'm going to also add the combined one. So or just let's do multi-directional first, just to see the difference. So we're going to say hill shade combined. If we ran this, we got a new tip file. Let's load this in QGIS. And let me zoom out. So this is the output of a get with the combined hill shading where I have multi-directional lighting. So before we had this, after it was this. You can see, you can see the lighting very clearly, the source of direction very clearly in the previous one. The current one is more light and homogeneously. What you want to use, again, this is more of a subjective choice, the map you're creating, what works better for you to use as a base map. GDAL gives you the option to try different things and you can try, use this. So I would, all of you can try this out, try the multi-directional one, save it as a new file, load both of them and compare the difference on your own machine so you can see how they are different. Over the years, the, the best relief maps were created by the cartographers from Swiss Topo. If anybody has seen those maps, this is what those maps look like. This is a kind of hand-drawn, hand-shaded map of a terrain created by the cartographers at Swiss Topo. They're really famous maps. They have this unique style of creating the shading and nobody was able to replicate this using computers because this is based on human subjective interpretation. So people would just sit and draw this map by hand and create the shading. So these are very popular and this was the gold standard for creating this relief map. Compare this, what you see here, with what we created. This is good, but nothing as close as what you can get with this manual styling. So if you take a map, a really beautiful map, and you see this kind of relief shading, likely it's in kind of created manually by hand. Since, since longest time, nobody could replicate this. Till recently, somebody tried saying that we have neural networks now, we have deep learning models. Can we train a deep learning model to create a hill shade from a DM based on this style? Can we say, take this input, try to replicate this output? We can. We have a lot of training samples because we have this historic database of maps created by Swiss Topo cartographers. Can we train a new neural network? And I have linked to this paper here, cartographic relief shading with neural networks. And people tried this and they were successful in doing so. They have a neural network model. They was able to replicate the style of the Swiss Topo cartographers. And if you see some examples, they are incredible that you can now give any DEM and it's able to create this kind of relief shading style that you do this. So again, they go through how they train the model. It's a kind of typical CNN model. And again, you can see there are different modes of doing this. And in the testing, they found to be quite comparable to ocean training data. So this is amazing. They've also productionized this. So if you want to say, I love this, I want to do this, there is also a software which they have produced, which you install it and run this with your own DM and it'll create this cartographic relief shading for your data. And it's a paid software, it's not free, but it's available to you if you want to try this out. It's also, there's a demo version available. So if you can try this out and see how it works for you. So this is the current state of the art in relief shading where you are combining the best of humans with the best of machines and you're able to create this. Otherwise, if you want to do this with currently available algorithms, GDAL gives you all these options to be able to create this. There's a question around, can we change the altitude of the sun? Yes, so that is a option here on altitude. So if you say dash alt, it will be altitude of light. So by default, I think it's 45 degrees, but you can change the altitude of light and the light elevation will change from where the light is coming from. So dash ALT is the flag for that. 